Hey Valley Middle, welcome back to another lesson. Today we're going to explore the world of the least common multiple. It's an ex going to be an exciting adventure. <laughs> Sorry, my kids are giving me a hard time because I keep restarting here tonight. All right, let's uh, see. Let's start off with something fun here. Our trivia question for tonight is something you all should be able to get. I have to throw in an easy one once in a while. What's the only U.S. state whose name is one syllable? You think on that. You should have it by the time I get to my next target here. Here we go. Tonight, officially, the target is 4.8a. I can find the least common multiple for a small group of numbers. Let's do this thing. All right. Hot dogs come in packages of 12, sorry, of 10. Hot dog buns come in packages of 12. First of all, what's up with that? Doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, if I want to have exactly one bun for each hot dog, no leftovers, no waste, what is the smallest number of hot dog buns or hot dogs and buns that I can buy? Well, in order to solve this problem, we need to find the least common multiple of 10 and 12 to answer the question. So that's what I did. You'll see down below. Here's dogs, and I listed out the multiples for 10. So one package would be 10, two would be 20, three would be 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. Then I did the buns. Well, 12, 12 buns in one package, 24 and 2, 36. 48, 60, 72, and you'll notice that 60 is the smallest number that both 10 and 12 share. So that's the least common multiple. So if I buy 60 hot dogs, I'm going to have exactly 60 buns. Of course, I have to buy six packages of hot dogs and five packages of buns, but for 10 and 12, 60 is that least common multiple. All right, let's take a look at the definition of least common multiple. The smallest number that a group of numbers all share as a multiple or all go into evenly. For example, 2, 3, and 4. The least common multiple of these is 12. That's the smallest number that all three numbers go into. I like to use the word shared instead of common. It kind of helps me understand these terms of GCF, greatest common factor. I think of it as the greatest shared factor. Remember we talked about that concept earlier? And LCM, least common multiple. I like to think of it as the smallest shared multiple. All right, so hopefully that word common, if you think of it as shared, that'll help you too. There's a couple of approaches to it. Here's the traditional approach, and there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, here's the question. What is the least common multiple of 6, 12, and 18? Well, you just list a few multiples for each number. So here's what I did. 6, 12, 18... 30, 36. And I listed a few for 12. 12, 24, 36, 48, and 60. Then I listed some for 18. 18, 36, and 54. And you can see I listed fewer multiples uh, when I got down to skip counting by 18s because I could already see that 36 was lining up. So 36 is the smallest number that all three of these share as a multiple. Okay? Therefore, 36 is the least common multiple. Sometimes we just say LCM, or least common multiple. You with me on this? Okay. Here's my approach, which is very similar, but I like to call it mine. Um, being as lazy as I am, I don't want to work that hard. So here's my question. What's the least common multiple of 8, 12, and 16? Well, I just take the largest number, and I put some multiples down, five or six of them, 16, 32, 48, 64, and 80. I just skip count by them. And then I look at the first multiple and say, well, these are my other two numbers, 8 and 12. Will 8 go into 16? Yeah, it sure will. Will 12? No. So that's a no. Both numbers have to fit. Will 8 and 12 go into 32? Negative. Will 8 and 12 both go into 48? Yes. So 16, we already know, goes into it because we skip counted by 16s. So the least common multiple then is 48. It's the smallest number that is a multiple of both 8, 12, and 16. And I just put that down here too. 48 is the least common multiple. So I think you'll see that my method, you know, it's basically the same thing. I just think it's a little bit easier. And less chance for a mistake because you're really only skip counting by one set of numbers. Okay? So try my approach again. Uh, what's the least common multiple of 6, 9, and 27? Well, take the largest number, which is 27, and I skip count by it. 27, 54, 81, 98, 
And then I look at the numbers. Will 6 and 9 go into 27? No. Will 6 and 9 go into 54? Yeah. Remember the trick? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 54. You do the finger thing? Yeah, you know how to count by nines. All right. Um, I got the flashing light here, scene. You can also check these with a calculator, too. So if you're not sure how to do this, you're not sure how to skip count, put 27 in the calculator. Watch me here. I'll get my calculator up. 27. Whoops. 27. Plus 27. There's the second multiple. 54 plus 27. You get the third multiple, etc. All right? Then... You can take a look at those two numbers like 27. And if you're not sure, just take and divide it out. 27 divided by 6. Is it a whole number? If it's a whole number, you can skip count by and get to it. It'll be a factor. If it's not, no. All right? And so you can use your calculator in that method too if you'd like to. Um, I think most of the numbers you're going to see in sixth grade, you can figure out by yourself if you use a little mental math. All right, I got some questions for you to try then. Why don't you see if you can uh, find what the least common multiple of 3, 9, and 12 are. I've left my steps here, so why don't you go ahead and pause the computer and do that. I see dead people. It's been a couple of videos since I said that, so I had to work that in today. All right, let's see how you did. Uh, well, 12 is the largest, so I skipped counted by 12s. 12, 24, 36, 48. Do 3 and 9 go into 12? Nope, 3 does, but not 9. Do 3 and 9 both go into 24? Negative. Do 3 and 9 both go into 36? Oh, yeah, you betcha, sure. Yeah, don't you know? That's my Fargo accent. Yes, it does. So 36, then, is the least common multiple between these three numbers. Okay? All right. Here's your ticket to the show. Find uh, the least common multiple for these two different sets of numbers. And I'll just pause for a second so you can copy those down. Okay, do you remember which number you're going to start with if you're using my approach? That's right. Start with the largest. Skip count by that. All right, back to the trivia question. What's the only U.S. state whose name has one syllable? You way in the back row. What? Huh? Oh, yeah, you're right. Maine. The only state whose name has one syllable. Never thought about that till tonight. Hmm. All right, thanks. Have a good evening. Bye.